everyone. Today we're going to take a look at Forbidden Island. Forbidden Island is one of my favorite cooperative games, and it's a great family game. Today we're going to take a look at both versions of the game and uh, see how the physical version compares with the iOS version. Let's take a look. Forbidden Island has some of the best components I have seen in a game, especially for the price. It is really a high quality made game. In Forbidden Island, players are going to an island made up of different tiles. Players are searching this island for four treasures. Once players have obtained these four treasures they will and can escape the island, they will win the game. Players will gain these treasures by um, going through the island and collecting treasure cards. Once they have four treasure cards of a type, they can go to the temple or that treasure and claim it. So for example, the earth treasure, once they have four, they can go to one of the earth temples found on the island and can claim the treasure as seen here. In Forbidden Island, each player will take on a color and also a role. Each role has a special ability and a matching colored pawn. This will represent the player in the game. Each turn in Forbidden Island, Players will have three actions. These include moving around the island, one tile orthogonally, or flipping a tile, which is called shoring it up. Any tiles that get drawn from the flood deck will be flipped over to their sinking side, and players can shore them up in order to prevent them from disappearing. Players can also pass cards to other players if they are on the same spot. This allows players to help other players gain four of the same card as players are working together. At the end of their turn, players will draw two cards, which can include special ability cards like the sandbag or treasure cards. Also, occasionally, uh, players will draw water rise cards. These cards are very terrible, whereas all of the flood cards that have already been drawn will be shuffled and put back on top of the deck, meaning they will be able to be drawn again causing some tiles to possibly sink. After this, players will draw a number of flood cards according to their flood level, which we will see in just a moment. So if a card that is already flipped over is drawn, that tiles and that card are removed from the game. Also, if each time a water rise card is drawn, the flood meter goes up. Forbidden Island was released for iOS last week, seemingly by surprise. I'm not sure if anyone knew it was coming. It is a very interesting adaptation of this cooperative game and uses a lot of the original art and seems that it will appeal to families as well as uh, solo players. Starting a game in Forbidden Island is fairly simple. Players have several options. They can choose the number of players they wish to play with, the difficulty, and as well as the layout. The layout is interesting as it allows you to do pass and play, which means everything will be facing one orientation or tabletop where each player's information will be facing them. You can choose your roles for the game or start the tutorial, or you can just hit quick start, which will assign you random roles, roles for the players you have chosen. Once in game, players can click on their role picture to read what their role does and what their special ability is. Players, when it is their turn, can see all their highlighted options in green. Tiles that are highlighted in green, they can move to, or the little shore-up symbols mean those are tiles that, they, that can be shored up by that player. Once they are done, the card deck highlights, and then the flood deck highlights, and they um, must select these options. The game does include a few animations that may bother some players, but I didn't find them to slow the game down too much. Also, the game includes some pretty intuitive symbology that made sense almost immediately, but if you do uh, have problems with it, you can learn it through the in-game tutorial. Forbidden Island does have a nice tutorial built in, but it also is complemented by a rule book that is very thematic looking and includes images from the game that will help you um, learn how the app works rather than um, how the components of the physical board game work, which are which is a very useful feature. It also includes um, settings. All of these have beautiful backgrounds, by the way, uh, for music as well as posting your achievements to social networking sites. There is, are also Game Center achievements, and uh, they all 
required you to complete different feats in the game, and you, there are some very interesting ones included here. Another cool feature about Forbidden Island is that you can um, resume and save several games at a time in this very cool screen. It'll even show you your progress of how many treasures you have, and also just have some cool thematic touches. Forbidden Island is one of my favorite cooperative games, and this app does an excellent job of capturing the game for me. It does not use a ton of video game elements except in interface design. As you can see, it looks a lot like the board game does. However, it does use nice thematic touches that you really couldn't have in a board game, such as the very cool rulebook and the resume screen. As I said before, this app has one of the sleekest interface designs I have ever seen on iOS. It really is one of the high quality games on this system. It takes a lot of the gameplay that you would experience in Ghost Stories and makes it not only, I think, more attractive interface wise, but also um, and more appealing to families, which are becoming a key demographic in the iOS board game space. My one complaint is that while making this design super sleek, the developers also may have made it possibly confusing for uh, players as there may be some things that are hard to grasp. I also uh, think that this is one of the apps that would do great while playing um, wirelessly through Apple TV because there really does, is no need for hidden information and players can all look at the screen while one player whose turn it is can control via the iPad device or iPhone 4S. Forbidden Island is honestly one of the best apps I have ever played on iOS. Best, you must understand, is a relative term. Best will not be the same for every app, because every app does not need the same feature set to succeed, and this app fully succeeds in what it is trying to do. Mm -hmm.